After watching these first two games from the Baltimore Ravens, one thing that we can all collectively agree on is that the offensive line has been an issue, particularly on the right side of the offensive line at both positions, right guard and right tackle. And those positions have been manned by Daniel Filele and Patrick McCarry for the most part. We, of course, know there's been a little bit of a rotation here and there, but... Those have been the starters. So in a press conference on Monday, John Harbaugh was asked about both of those guys, particularly Daniel Filele, when Jeff Zrebic asked him, John Harbaugh, what does Ben Cleveland have to do in order to get playing time? Because when we've seen Ben Cleveland play at right guard, he's been solid. But Harbaugh basically said, like, look, Filele is better. The tape don't lie. Filele beat out Ben Cleveland for the starting job. That's why Filele is the starter and not Ben Cleveland. So when we heard those comments, we just thought that it just it wasn't good. I didn't feel like uh, John Harbaugh was putting the best starting five out there on the offensive line. Then, of course, we also talked about how Roger Rosengarten should be out there instead of Pat McCarry, in my opinion. But then veteran Chris Long, he, he's since retired by now, but Chris Long even commented on it. And he said that the whole rotating tackles and stuff, that's crazy. He said he don't, doesn't know why John Harbaugh is doing that because that can mess up their flow. That can mess up their rhythm. And he said he watched the game and watched the film on, on uh, Roger Rosengarten versus uh, Max Crosby and Pat McCarry versus Max Crosby. And he said it himself, a former NFL player who was not bad either. He said it himself like, hey, that rookie, Roger Rosengarten, he played much better than Pat McCarry did. So I don't know why John Harbaugh doesn't have him out there starting. But anyway, back to Ben Cleveland. We know that he's been in John Harbaugh's doghouse for whatever the reason is. We know that him and John Harbaugh, whatever it is, it's crazy. We don't know why they don't see eye to eye, but for whatever reason, they don't see eye to eye. I don't know what the issue is. I don't know where it came from, where it started. But we do know that there is something that's been brewing between those two for a long time. But Ben Cleveland, he responded to John Harbaugh. But... His comments, actually, they shocked me. The reason they shocked me was because uh, not him responding, but what he said and the way that he said it. Let's take a read at this article from the Baltimore Sun uh, from Sam Cohn. Uh, it says, when Tyler Linderbaum missed time in camp with a neck injury, Harbaugh slid Cleveland over to center. And that's something that I forget about a lot. I forgot that they did have Ben Cleveland playing center. They had him playing center in the, uh, in the preseason as well. It wasn't pretty, but they did have him there. Anyway. It says, uh, meanwhile, Filele, who took reps at right tackle down the stretch last season while Morgan Moses nursed a biceps injury, moved over to right guard. Yes, and that's true. You remember the rotation uh, last year? Ronnie Stanley was rotating with Pat McCarty on the left side. Uh, Filele was rotating with Morgan Moses on the right side. Uh, but then uh, when they moved him to right guard, Filele moved him to right guard, I thought, okay, they're just trying some stuff out. They're just doing a little experiment. So we heard that one week, and then we heard it another week. Oh, Filele still at right guard. It's like, oh, okay. Then we heard it another week, and it's like, oh, Filele still at right guard. It's like, uh, uh all right. I mean, I, I do that in Madden a lot with Filele, but in real life, I just didn't think it would be something that they would actually follow through with, but they did. Anyway, continuing back to the article, it says, uh, he beat out Cleveland for the starting job, Harbaugh said, just a fact, straight up, matter of fact, based on what they seen on tape. So you remember that. Now let's get to Ben Cleveland. Ben Cleveland is eager for an opportunity there or elsewhere on the offensive line if the opportunity presents itself. And this is what Ben Cleveland said. He said, there weren't a whole lot of right guard reps taken by me during camp just because of injury and all the above. So just staying ready for when my number gets called to go in and play. OK, and that's true. That's true. And again, that's something that I, I really forgot about because, again, Tyler Linderbaum, he was hurt. He had, I think, what, a neck injury. He was out for a while, and they slid Ben Cleveland over the center. See how that will play out. It obviously didn't work out. He didn't look the best there. But And I know um, Nick Samack, he got hurt a little bit because he got hurt in that first preseason game too. But anyway, continuing. He also said, I feel like I've been my most consistent and most proactive throughout camp. Uh, it's been a struggle having to move around positions with injuries and stuff like that. But as far as adapting to other positions and just playing where I'm asked, I feel like I've been extremely consistent and competitive we did some things a lot better this past game than we did in week one it's just going to take us working together and grinding through the bad plays the good plays and just keep rolling with it so with ben cleveland his comments his response to john harbaugh the w reason that i was so surprised by it and so shocked by it is because we know that th there's some animosity between these two but I, I really admire how ben cleveland he took the high road he took the high road and i think he took the high road because he knows his job is in John Harbaugh's hands. And his future is not necessarily in John Harbaugh's hands, but anything he does, anything he says, it can impact his future in a positive or a negative way. 
He already got tape on him at, at right guard. We already, everybody got tape on Ben Cleveland at right guard. We know he's getting ready to be a free agent after this year. We know the Baltimore Ravens are not going to re-sign him after this year. He is going to be long gone. I mean, and I'm, I'm sure it's going to be best for him, best for Harbaugh too, best for both of them, that they go their separate ways. So Ben Cleveland going to be able to get a fresh start somewhere else uh, in the near future after this season is done. But if he were to lash out at John Harbaugh, if he were to say something disrespectful to John Harbaugh, if he was to say something that was just downright nasty, he could be telling the truth. But if he were to say it, it wouldn't only impact him now, but it could possibly impact him in the future, too, with a team that may be looking at him. Because teams, they remember all this stuff. They see all this stuff. They read all this stuff. They watch all this stuff. And obviously, film is the most important thing. But still, you say the wrong thing. You slip up, especially as a backup. Because you know, he's not even a starter. Right now, he's a backup. So if he said, messed around and said the wrong thing, teams could look at that and be like, mm, no, I'm straight. That's not a good teammate. That's not somebody we want to bring on our staff. And it's tough for Ben Cleveland. Because, and it's tough for us, too, because we're watching the games. We're watching every single play from the offensive line, and we think, like, oh, my goodness. Th there's no way that Ben Cleveland is worse than this. There's no way, right? And, and we've seen Ben Cleveland. That's what makes it worse. It's not even one of those things where it's just, all right, we're just imagining what Ben Cleveland could possibly do with this offensive line. We're just wondering what Ben Cleveland will look like as a starter. We've seen it already. We've seen it multiple times, too. It's not even like it's just been, oh, Ben Cleveland just started for one game. No, we've seen him play in multiple games. So we got plenty of film and plenty of tape on Ben Cleveland to see what he can do and he has done in this league, not just in the preseason, but in regular season action. And he did his thing. Like we said before, it wasn't like he did this all pro right guard, but Ben Cleveland, he held his own. So with John Harbaugh, the whole gripe that he got with Ben Cleveland, again, I just, I wish he would just do what's best for the team and let it go. And, then I, and I get it. Now, look, one thing that I, I will say, like you, you cannot just let players walk all over you cannot just let them do whatever and i'm not saying that ben cleveland is doing that but i know like practice is where everything starts if a player say for instance a player not showing up to practice if a player like late to practice all the time something like that and a player just looks downright bad it's like oh well, okay, well i get it but again i don't know the story with ben cleveland practice i just know by what we've seen when he's played that's it that that's that that's all i know because that's all we've all seen. Now, of course, the coaches, we, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know what they see. So that could be what, what this whole holdup is with Ben Cleveland versus John Harbaugh. I feel like they just need to just book a match for WrestleMania or something. Just get it there. Book, book a match for WrestleMania. And if you got to make it a tag team match, cool. But book a one-on-one, -on -one, a steel cage match. So, so y'all could just squash it, whatever it is. And then at the WrestleMania, WrestleMania's in April. So both of y'all will have moved on by then. So... Because it's just crazy, man. It's just crazy. But we'll see what happens after this. But Ben Cleveland, his response was probably the best response that he could possibly get. Because it was very hardball friendly. It was very team friendly. And it was very um, accountable. So shout out to Ben Cleveland for how he responded to John Harbaugh's comments, and we'll see what happens in the future. We've reached my favorite part of these videos where we feature your questions. If you'd like to be part of this, you can send me an email at teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, our guy, Tom. Appreciate you, Tom. And without further ado, let's get into Tom's question. He said, Engraven, hope you're doing well. Hey, we are doing great. I hope you're doing even better. And thank you again for becoming a patron. He said, I have a theory on our Baltimore Ravens over the last couple of years and wondering what you think. I think Baltimore can't function when they don't identify themselves as the underdog. Mm. I wow, that that is something right there. Um I, I, I remember saying last year, like Ravens need to get over that. They need to get over that because they are a good team. They're a great team. They're a team that can be very, very dominant. Uh, but then, yeah, sometimes they, they want to get the mentality, oh, yeah, we the, we the underdogs. We the underdogs. Well, y'all are the underdogs because y'all ain't won no Super Bowls, but that's the only type of underdog the Ravens have been uh, when it comes to Super Bowl. That's it. Because regular season, oh, yeah, that, they, ain't, they don't be underdogs like that. But anyway, continuing. But I, I do agree with you, though. He said, um, if we go back, we have always played our best football when players think 
they have to prove the media wrong. I think after they achieve that, uh, that they have an identity crisis, which causes them to have no fuel uh, on the fire to inspire them to play 110% football. Uh, to back up my point, think about this. We go into a game with a serious team not being the analyst favorites. Uh, two, we beat that team. Three, we win the following weekend, win some respect from the analysts. Four, then we lose to a team we have no business losing to or losing against because of sloppy play or lazy mistakes. Just a thought. What do you think? That's a very, very, very great question. Uh, and that's that's real right there. Um, and, and it makes sense because we see it all the time. Um, Ravens, like in the Chiefs game, they they were underdogs in that one. I would say not by much, but they were certainly underdogs. And they played, even with all the mistakes, even with that being like really a preseason game for them, um, came right down to it. Uh, but then you see against the Raiders, uh, while it did come, come right down to it, it just was sloppy. And we were heavily favored against the Raiders. Uh, it was a game, again, y'all know, I thought it was going to be like 41-17, to 17, something like that. And they just, they just, it was terrible. It, it, it was all kinds of bad. Um, but Ravens just have a, uh, they have a consistency issue. Um, I, and I, I do agree, they have a uh, an issue where they do overlook teams too. Like even um, the Devontae Adams compliment to, the, to Lamar Jackson. I think it was a genuine compliment, but I also think at the same time it was a little bit of mind games too. Well, I do think he does believe that Lamar Jackson is the best uh, ball carrier ever. Um, and he did say he, like, he, when he wanted to start breaking tackles more, he watched Lamar Jackson highlights. Um, but at the same time, I think he was just putting it out there like, let me try to boost their heads up real quick. Let me try to boost Lamar's head up so maybe it can work in our favor. And Lamar really wasn't running like that against the Raiders. I mean, a lot of times he had to because the offensive line wasn't blocking, but he wasn't really running like that against the Raiders. So it worked in their favor. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that is something that they have to uh, work on. But where, how can you fix something like that? Preparation. Who prepares this team? Well, you know who. Next question came from my guy, Martin. He said, here's the argument for Belichick. Oh, because I, uh, when we did a video yesterday, because there have been a couple of people saying, oh, Bill Belichick should be the Baltimore Ravens next head coach. And I've been saying, like, I just I don't see the vision for it like a lot of y'all see it. But I guess he's about to explain it. He said, um, I was in the same thing in that Belichick wouldn't be a good fit for the team. But I thought about what if Belichick just needed what Andy Reid needed moving on from Philadelphia with all his success? I th well, uh, uh, that was different, though, because Andy Reid had a lot of success in Philadelphia, but he kept, kept coming up short. Bill Belichick had a lot of success in New England. And he got six Super Bowls. So a little bit different. But anyway, continue. He said, um, with all his success, I think he was uh I think he was fine with his last two seasons. He was twelve and twenty. I think the main reason oh he was fired with his from his last two seasons. I think he was he's twelve and twenty. I think the main reason we aren't feeling Belichick is because his last two seasons at New England weren't great. Also, he's a defensive minded coach. I know we all want Clint Kubiak. Uh, I just think Belichick has had the proven success over two decades, and a major point to Belichick credit is he wins over Andy Reid in the playoffs. Lamar is far better than Mac Jones. Uh, let's see what he could do with Lamar Jackson. Well, uh, yeah, obviously Lamar definitely better than uh, Mac Jones. Um, okay, that's that's a, a good point right there as far as him beating Andy Reid, because that's. Yeah, that's tough to do. <laughs> Those Ravens fans. Uh, he said, another benefit to me is unlike Harbaugh, I don't think he would panic and be scared. Imagine what he could do with Kyle Hamilton, Roquan Smith, Adafi, Brandon Stevens, Matabike. His last two seasons in New England, I think, uh, have soured everyone's opinion on him. But I think he could win a Super Bowl with this team. That's a good point. To me, it wasn't even really about the last two seasons. Because, again, he had Mac Jones. And I remember yesterday, I just could not remember his name for nothing. But, yeah, it's Mac Jones. But, um... It's just, I don't, he just, uh, let me just continue. He says, so to cap off wins over Andy Reid in the playoffs, vastly improved defense, multiple Super Bowls, 20 years of having a dynasty, are all things uh, that I think will make him a great coach for our team. But I also understand wanting to have an offensive-minded head coach. Uh, though I think Bill Belichick is the best choice, I don't think he's the only choice. Think about how you would have felt if Mike McDonald was a head coach. That would have made you excited too, and he is a defensive-minded head coach. So I don't see why Belichick being a defensive-minded head coach would be any different than Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald, excuse me, that's a, that's a really, really good point. Because, yeah, thinking about Mike McDonald taking over for the Ravens, especially everything he did with the defense, especially what he did with adjustments, that part. But anyway, he says, switching subjects to the current head coach. I thought about this question, and I want to ask the rest of the team, keep it clean. What is John Harbaugh good at? We have the only head coach in the league that doesn't specialize in the offense or defensive side of the ball. He constantly makes questionable personnel decisions, doesn't get players involved that should be involved, and is one of the few coaches that, when things are working, finds ways to sabotage them. 
I don't know why he does this. Whatever is working, he finds ways to break it. I don't like calling for another man's job, but this team is ready to win now. We have everything we need to win, uh, which is why I think change will have to happen if we keep losing, and it can be scary. Uh, I know I'm an Arkansas Razorbacks fan. We fired our head coach, Bobby Paterno, over 12 years ago, and our franchise hasn't recovered since. Then, uh, I know it can be very scary letting something that has, that's has been working good, but honestly, ask yourself, what does John Harbaugh do better than any coach in the league? I think John Harbaugh is just he's a motivator. He, he he's a motivator. Uh he's a team builder. Um he is somebody that can really uh bring his guys together. Um and that is something that that you need on teams because you don't want to have all these different guys like in their own like little areas and whatnot. You don't want to have them separated and whatnot. You want your team to be that a team. But anyway, continuing. He said, since he doesn't specialize in offense or defense, I don't think he can ever be credited with the success of the offense or defense, though it might not also then be fair to blame him for the failure, but he's been the coach of this team for 16 years. We'll have to move on eventually, and all this might sound like I hate Haas, but I don't. I think he has been an excellent coach for us, but just like how Flacco was and still is one of my two favorite players ever, I know it was time to move on. That's a great uh, analogy because, yeah, we love Flacco, but we also knew it was time. And with Harbaugh, Anyway, continue what he said. Um, I hope I'm wrong about Harbaugh, and I can be one of the fans at the end of the at the end of the ball as he holds up the Super Bowl trophy at the end of the season and tell everyone he told him so. Sorry for the very long comment. I had a lot on my mind and a lot to say. That is a okay, and you sure got it all off your chest. But you made some very very good points as always. What's the difference? Next question came from Nova. He said, "Hey, Engraven, Nova here. So I've let this loss digest, and now that I'm not emotional about the game anymore, I can think rationally. Anyway, I just got one question, but it's one that hit me watching your video." On Wednesday and I wanted to know your thoughts okay here we go he says so I'm hearing all the fire hobs convo and points are all valid but it hits me we have seen this already and riddle me this if you take all these same arguments and just replace this name John Harbaugh with William Belichick what's the difference hear me out okay let's see where he's going with this he said head coach is long tenured and a hall of famer but has not adjusted to the game well qb is really the life of the team with how mediocre the offense is o-line has been awful for five years uh, defense and special teams has always been the focus with drafting press conference getting snappier with the head coach because of losses cannot attract free agent because the offense is abysmal outside the quarterback frustrations with current players petty reasons for sitting the best players and sacrificing wins as a result just a few examples and i'm sure there are more but i had to hear your thoughts on that idea love the channel keep it up appreciate that nova oh my goodness Woo. Ooh, that's an interesting point. Um, all of those traits, characteristics. Um, wow, Bill Belichick started to get like that. But the difference, one has a Lamar Jackson and Bill Belichick had a Mac Jones. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, Engraven, now that all the media outlets are slandering the Ravens and Max Crosby came out on his pod uh, and is painting us in a light where Ravens fans should be comfortable. In fact, uh, QB1 himself loves to be in a situation, and that's being an underdog. Just when they start to count us out, we prevail. I will be at the Dallas Ravens game this Sunday. Uh, it's for my birthday. Shout out to my fiance, Leandre, and can't wait to watch this Ravens win when we are, when we are doubted the most. Yeah, yeah it, it seems like it. That's what Ravens do. Ravens love trolling. I was just talking to my guy, Amir, um, yesterday, and I was telling him, like, look, this is what Ravens do. It, just when you think the Ravens are done, just when you think it's a wrap, just when you think it's over, they come out and they get a blowout win against somebody. And it's a win that we don't expect. We expect it to be, whether well, we expect it to be a close, super close game. We expect them to lose. We expect the unexpected ends up happening every time. So I would not be surprised if the Ravens beat the Dallas Cat. Well, I will be surprised, but I won't be surprised at the same time because it's just what Ravens do. So I hope you enjoy the game, Keontae. Next question came from Optimum. He said, this is my first time sending a question. And it certainly won't be your last, my friend. He said, my name is Joe. What do you think if, uh, what's up, Joe? He said, what do you think if we got rid of Harbaugh and hired one of these OCs as a head coach? The Saints, uh, who is Gary Kubiak's son, and his offensive scheme is used by the Rams, Packers, Dolphins, and 49ers. Uh, the Lions offensive coordinator and or the Texans offensive coordinator who was productive last year with a bad offensive line. I mean, I feel like with a lot of those, you can't go wrong. My, my thing was whoever the Baltimore Ravens, if, if, and that's a big if, if they were to ever move on from John Harbaugh or when John Harbaugh stepped down. So whenever John Harbaugh wasn't the Baltimore Ravens head coach anymore, I would just really want it to be somebody that's going to do any and everything to get the most out of Lamar Jackson. Now, that's not just on a head coach. It's on the head coach, it's on the offensive coordinator, but it's also on the GM as well. So, Eric DaCosta does a lot of things good, but one thing that, in my opinion, he doesn't do good enough 
is due a lot more for the Baltimore Ravens offense. So that would be something that I would hope would change as well. Next question came from Tammy. She said, what are your thoughts on Ray Lewis being a head coach for the Baltimore Ravens? Just a thought. I don't think it would ever happen. Uh, Ray Lewis has already said that he don't want to be no head coach in the NFL. Yeah, and you know, like, if he wanted a job as a head coach, like, he could get one. And he could start as a linebacker's coach. He could work his way up to defensive coordinator, then move up to head coach. And for Ray Lewis, especially with his name, like, he would move up pretty quickly. But he's already said that he doesn't want to do it. Next question came from my guy, Albert. He said, Angraven hey, is the first time I sent an email. Appreciate it, Al. He said, what I wanted to talk about is the stubbornness of Harbaugh. Probably the most infuriating thing about Harbaugh is his doghouse. I truly believe that's where Cleveland is currently. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he got a couch, a bed, got a kitchen. I uh, probably got an extra bedroom, too, for any guests that want to come through. But, yeah, he, he settled down in there for sure. Um, but he said, that's where Cleveland is currently. And after watching how badly Philele has played, during these first two weeks, it's just mind-numbing how Cleveland didn't touch the field. I mean, it literally couldn't get any worse. I've been saying it since 2019 that Harbaugh needed to go. And I really wanted McDonald to move into our head coach role so badly, but it appears that Harbaugh will be here until he wants to leave. Probably spot on, most likely. I, nine times out of ten. Yeah, Harbaugh going to be here until, until he don't want to be here no more. Anyway, he said, on another note, do you think the Tucker field goal issues could be related to Sam Cook leaving? Mmm... You know what? I think it was my guy Moko in, in the uh, live stream the other day during the Raiders game that he talked about. He brought up the Wolfpack. Somebody brought up the Wolfpack. I think it was him. But anyway, because um, Tucker with the Wolfpack on point. But even after the first member of the Wolfpack left, Tucker was still doing his thing. But I think I think there was a start. It's a tiny, tiny bit. But that could be it. Maybe. May, maybe maybe they just it, they ain't got that same chemistry like that. And the Wolfpack was the Wolfpack. It was like them three guys. They knew each other. They, they were like, oh, cool. They're buddy, buddy and stuff. So. Maybe it's just different. So I think that could have that could possibly have a big impact on it. Because now it's Jordan Stout, uh, Nick Moore, and um, Justin Tucker. So maybe. Maybe they just uh, – or maybe just Justin Tucker just – I don't even know, man. I don't even know because it's the craziest thing. Because to, to, to watch Justin Tucker just go from here to sort of dropping off significantly, especially from 50, from 50 and out, it's like, man, we just knew, like – even when we doubted Justin Tucker, when we were scared with Justin Tucker going for a game-winning kick or a game-time kick or a big kick, we would get nervous. I, I know I will get nervous, but at the same time, I'd be like, oh, man, is he going to make this? But at the same time, back in my mind, like, oh, he, he's going to make this. It's Justin Tucker. And he would. But now, it ain't like that no more. He said, I feel like these misses all started around the time that Cook retired and stopped being Tucker's holder. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks for what you do, bud. Appreciate you. He said, go Ravens, even if it's tough to cheer for them right now. Should we trade for a right guard? Next question came from my guy Liam. He said, man, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing great. It's been over a year since I last sent you a question from subs. I know it's crazy, right? Yeah, that is crazy. That's a long time, man. But welcome back. He said, anyway, you in for a long question. LOL, sorry in advance. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at this email, and this is a lot. Anyway, he said, so after watching the Ravens-Raiders game, it's pretty obvious what our problem is. Besides coaching, of course, it's the offensive line. Clearly, we are not Super Bowl contenders with Filele starting at right guard since Harbaugh won't play Cleveland. Do you think our best option is to tr trade for a right guard? Obviously, we have to make some moves at this deadline, starting out 0-2 with our next three games looking rather rough. I looked at the 2025 upcoming free agents at the right guard position that the Ravens could possibly scoop up, and there's four notable names. Zach Martin from the Cowboys. Oh, yeah, Ravens. I had to pay some money for that. Anyway, continuing, he said, uh, Will Hernandez on the Cardinals, Kevin Zeitler on the Lions. <laughs> oh, oh, him, huh? I remember him and Dalton Reisner on the Vikings. I was surprised that they didn't give him a shot when he was a free, because he was a free agent for a while. Uh, he was a free agent. He was out there for a long time, and the Vikings ended up schooling him up. But anyway, he said, I doubt the Cowboys will trade Martin away with Zeitler being 34. I doubt he will make a reunion with Baltimore. I realistically see trading for Hernandez or Reisner if we were to trade for one. Uh, if we do trade for a right guard, I can see us giving up a late round pick. And Marlowe, whoa, Marlon Humphrey too already? I don't see that. I, I, and again, anything could happen. I just don't see Marlon Humphrey getting traded this year. I don't, I don't see it happening. After this season, yeah, I, I think that's when you can see Marlon Humphrey get traded or cut. But during the season, I, ju I just don't see it. Anyway, he said, hit me out. With the drafting of Wiggins in Tampa, it's clear we're ready for the transition. Now, that part is true. Ravens are preparing for the transition at cornerback. Uh, but he said, and there are apparently some rumors that Marlo and some teammates aren't getting along. I don't know if you heard him and Stanley in the whole wedding thing, but that sounds sketchy. You know, I um I don't know if he talked about it in the podcast or not, in um with Jack Settleman, the Punchline podcast or not. Um, but yeah, I I ain't think nothing of it. Well, I thought it was it was it was like if you got your friends, sometimes your friends. Y'all can joke, and the jokes could be disrespectful, but you and your friends know at the end of the day it's all jokes. I don't know if there's some seriousness going on behind the scenes with him and Ronnie Stanley with that. I don't know, though. But anyway, 
Uh, he said, Vikings and Cardinals are also desperate in desperate need for a clear cornerback one, and Marlowe can give them that and help the young cats out, and Lamar will get the protection he clearly deserves. Tell me what you think. It's sorry for the long question. I can get pretty type happy at times. It's all good, my friend. Uh, thank you for always doing what you do, not only uh, the Ravens community, but the NFL community. As always, team, keep it clean and go Ravens. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think that they would do that. Uh, and uh, even as far as trading for a right guard, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see them doing it. I, I just, I think Harbaugh is gonna really want to stick with the guys that they have. Um, I just, I just don't see it. And then I think too, if um, well, you did mention giving up Marlon Humphrey because I was thinking like, if a right guard is a good enough, good enough to be a starter, uh, and the team would would the, would the team be willing to give him to the Baltimore Ravens, especially with how bad a lot of offensive lines are uh, in the NFL these days. Would they be willing to give him up to Baltimore? That, that's something to think about, too. But then you threw in Marlon Humphrey as well. So if Ravens throw in the starter, maybe the other team will throw in the starter. But I just don't see Marlon Humphrey getting traded this year. Is it time to panic? Next question came from my guy Eric. He said, Ain't Raven, long time subscriber on YouTube, but first time asking a question. All right, Eric, appreciate it. He said, I normally look forward to starting my days off with one of your videos, but I made the mistake of viewing your video about whether Hobbs should be fired last night after I got home from the loss against the Raiders. I'm not going to comment on Hobbs or the coordinators because I have bashed them enough on Bleacher Report and Facebook. LOL, oh, you be going in. All right, so he said, my question is, should I as a fan hit the panic button on Justin Tucker? Yes. I, I will say yes. Uh, until proven otherwise because again look at the last two games look at the last two games i would say yes because say for instance the game is close look at my daughter she's even crying about justin tucker right now she's like man what is going on i ain't even been in this world for just three months and i already know justin tucker is struggling so she she knows all about him too but with um with justin tucker say for instance the baltimore ravens need a game winning field goal and it's from 50 yards 51 yards maybe even 49 yards, I'm going to be scared. I'm going to be scared. I'm not going to have all the confidence in the world in a Justin Tucker right now just sim simply because of what he's been doing recently. So I, I do think it, it, is, it is time to panic. Hopefully he can ease uh, how we're feeling about him in these upcoming games. I mean, we don't want to really see Justin Tucker out there unless it's a, a PAT, the point after the touchdown. But if it is a field goal and it's a long field goal, I wonder how the Ravens will operate with it now. Like, I wonder if it, say for instance, it's a 52-yard field goal. Will the Ravens trot out Justin Tucker, or will they be like, you know what, we're, we're going to punt the ball instead? That's a, so let, let's see how they play it, too. Now, what does work in their favor, this next game against the Cowboys, is in a dome. It, it's closed. Well, they could open the roof, but it's closed. So they ain't going to have to worry about the wind and all that unless they turn the AC up super high. But other than that, Justin Tucker, that, it, if he's missing without no elements – then, yeah, I would still, I would smash that uh, panic button for sure. Anyway, he said, um, oh, I should have kept reading. He said, I thought I noticed some decline last season, which I think was his worst season in his Hall of Fame career. Now, after two weeks, I feel nervous when Tucker lines up for a field goal try over 40 yards. I, I can't blame you. He said, should the team bring in a kickoff specialist like they did in the final years of Matt Stover when he was a Raven? Or should the team start looking for Tuck's replacement? Um... I, I think it's something that you, you, you got to look for. Not now. I mean, I'm sure they're scouting people and they scout every single position. Uh, so you, you, you can go to the college ranks and start looking at kickers, man. You really should. Um, and not to say, oh, you got to replace Justin Tucker right away, but stay ready so you ain't got to get ready, man. Just just look to look. I know I'm sure Justin Tucker, he's going to want to keep, keep kicking for a long time, but it just all depends on how the rest of the season goes. We know it's been two weeks. He had two big misses. Um, so hopefully this is not a trend. Because he's, he's, he's two for two. Like, a miss in the first game and a miss in the second game. So he's two for two. <laughs> hopefully he don't go three for three and so on and so forth. But hopefully he can just get it turned around. It, well, hopefully he really can. I, I know um, it's crazy, though, because a lot of Ravens fans had brought this up last year uh, when Justin Tucker, when he started missing. They were like, oh, man, is he falling off? Is something going on? Is there a decline? And then I, I was like, oh, no, I don't even want to think about it. But it's something that you got to be real about. He said, anyway, sorry for the long email. Just needed to vent a little. Hey, it's all good. That's what we all here for, man. He said, again, thanks for what you do. Your videos are often a bright spot of my day. I appreciate that. Also, enjoy your time with Carter and your little princess. These years will fly by. Hey, you ain't lying. They sure do. Drama. Next question came from my guy, Oreo Cookie. He said, I ain't graving. It's been a while. College has been kicking my butt. Hey, well, you got to give college a kickback. Anyway, he said, but it's been a priority. And maybe that's a good thing because I'm not thinking about football like I used to. 
Hey, and, and if you, I mean, you obviously know what's going on with the Ravens. Maybe that's a good thing that you focus on college and not them. But anyway, he said, you know how winning covers things up? Well, yes, it does. Well, uh, we have yet to see if we can win <laughs> with this offensive line. <laughs> yeah, and uh, well, there's already drama seeking through. Uh, I see it potentially getting ugly. What do you think? Um, These two next games will tell the story because these two next games are going to be all in the national media. These next two games. Cowboys is going to be nationally televised. The everybody's going to be watching. And then the Bills on Sunday Night Football. That's another banger right there. So these next two games will tell if this drama continues or if the Ravens could get it turned around. Next question came from my guy TJ. He said, I'm done panicking. It's Super Bowl victory or deuces. And that's just my opinion. Lamar Jackson ain't Joe Flacco. He's Lamar action freaking Kobe Jackson. Hobbs honestly to me doesn't know how to coach. Doesn't know how to coach that. 14 and 2, 13 and 4, two time MVP. He's 26 and 27. And Hobbs keeps acting like he can't beat Andy Reid and the Chiefs. We can't buy a lead for a win. Uh, he ain't Joe Flacco. Get Devontae Adams. Win the Super Bowl or stop wasting the Ravens' time and Ravens fans' time. If you're not coaching Ravens and Lamar Jackson to Super Bowl victories I'm not panicking I'm not watching regular season games to get to the playoffs to beat everybody uh, win Super Bowls God bless the family the channel and all Ravens shout out to my guy TJ next question came from my guy Will T from the Ville he said hey Raven how you been been pretty good pretty busy crazy busy but pretty good no complaints he said how's team keep it clean Ben well y'all gotta answer that one he said well since yesterday I am already doubting uh, majorly about our season uh, before yesterday's game I was defending John Harbaugh and believe we could definitely bounce back from that loss against the Chiefs and be even better I did the same thing, too. I thought we would. He said, uh, yesterday's game just reminded me why people want him gone. The challenge calls were incredibly frustrating, even ignoring the player you trust most in Lamar when he said not to challenge the play. Handling the problem with what Bobby was saying about him, the project that is Fai Lele, along with Makari, etc. Now, some things were on the refs, like mostly Ravens fans also resort to, including myself. Like the crazy one-handed sack from Matabike that was called for a face mask. Oh, yeah, that was terrible. That was so bad. Or even the missed horse collar tackle on uh, Crosby made on Lamar just before he threw it away. You know what? I actually didn't think that was a horse collar. I thought it was close, but I thought he, he, he let go in the right time. He said, uh, but the one that they did get, that, that pass interference on Brandon Stevens. But anyway, he said, uh, but some of these play calls were just so frustrating, like a check down pass on third and 19. And I think right, right before that, the draw play on like second and 20. And that just screamed to me they were giving up. But anyway, continuing, he said multiple times, I know Monk can call the offensive plays, but if I remember correctly, Harbaugh can deny that play call, or Lamar can audible and choose a different play, right? Right. Uh, he said these last three games, the Ravens have played like you said, uh, the, the Ravens have played like you said has been frustrating because of the way we lost them. Uh, I want Harbaugh fired if nothing is changed by the next couple of games ASAP. But how many games or silly losses do you think the Ravens would have to lose for you to be completely sold to the idea of Harbaugh being fired? Mm. Well, mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't mind the Ravens moving on from John Harbaugh um, even now. I mean, I know realistically it's not going to happen right now. Not after no two games. No, no, no. Um, but I, uh, in order for them to do it, if they were to do it, mid oh, it would take a lot for them to do it during the season. It would take, like, literally, oh, my goodness. It would have to be so bad during the season. And I, don't, I don't really don't even think they would even fire him during the season. So I, I honestly think that Harbaugh, he, he would have uh, just the leeway of just the, the whole season going bad and then the Ravens starting to think about it at that point. Cause again, it just seems like he's just so safe, man. It seems like he's so safe. Uh, like I said before in previous videos, I would not mind if the bo both parties moved on because it could be great for both parties. It could be great for Harbaugh. You go somewhere else, it could be great for the Ravens. They get somebody else in. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't think it's – I don't think it's something that's even on their mind right now uh, just because of the relationship that they have with John Harbaugh. He said, apologize for the long message, but hope you and the fam and team keep it clean are doing great. I appreciate you, Will. This question came from my guy, Javo. He said, we complain about the old line now. Just wait till next year when we really might not have any money once we work on re-signing our upcoming free agents. Or will we have money to bring in some quality players? It all depends on how Ravens move. That's it. It all depends on that. He said, if Ronnie plays well this season, we might need to keep him for another year and draft the right tackle or left tackle so they can learn from Ronnie. I don't think they're keeping him. I, I think this is definitely the last year. Um, and then both parties move on, too. He said, Coach John is uh, the hot time right now, but some replacements I have for him are T. Martin. If John is released in the middle of the season. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's happening at all. Uh, he said, but uh, talk to the Eagles, Bills, Lions, Texans, and Rams offensive coordinators after the season is over. Oh, and maybe the enemy. Oh, you know that definitely ain't happening. Or Ed Reed. Oh, you, 
<laughs> you saying all these things that's not going down. Now, the offensive coordinators, yeah, that could happen. But the enemy of Air Reed, you know Ravens ain't going for that. 